we know from the particle model of matter that there are three main states or phases in which matter occurs and those are the solid state where particles are neatly arranged and packed in an orderly arrangement and fairly close together. There's the liquid state where the particles are not neatly arranged but still fairly close together but they are able to move around and over each other. And then there's the gaseous state where the particles are very far apart and move almost freely or independently of each other. We also know that it is possible to change state by absorbing energy. So we know that as the amount of energy increases or as they absorb energy, substances will go from the solid state to liquid state to the gaseous state. And the way that that happens is those molecules absorb enough energy to be able to break the forces of attraction that exist between those molecules, which allows them to move more freely when they become a liquid. And then if they absorb even more energy, they are able to move even more freely and independently of each other. We know that when a solid absorbs energy to become a liquid, we know that that state change or phase change is called melting. We also know that the reverse of that, when a liquid loses energy to become a solid again, we call that state change freezing. We know in the same fashion that when a liquid absorbs energy, it undergoes a state change from liquid to gas, and we call that vaporization. We call it vaporization because there are essentially two ways in which this state change can happen. The first one is when it absorbs enough energy and the entire liquid is able to become a gas, we call that boiling, and that is what happens when the liquid reaches what's called the boiling point. So in the example of water, when the water reaches 100 degrees, every single liquid molecule is able to separate and become a gas molecule. We also know that there's another form of vaporization known as evaporating. Evaporating is when only the liquid on the surface, only the particles on the surface are able to gain enough energy to escape and become a gas. We know that the inverse of that state change, the one from gas to liquid, is called condensing. And that is again when there is an energy loss. And then finally there is a possible state change from a solid to a gas. This is only under very specific conditions. Those specific conditions refer generally to a very specific pressure and temperature relationship where a solid goes directly into a gas is called sublimation and we know the most common example is that of solid carbon dioxide known as dry ice which converts into gas gaseous carbon dioxide through a process called sublimation and then the inverse or the reverse of that process where a gas goes directly from gas to solid we call deposition or deposition. So once again we know that in its lowest form of energy a substance which start out as a solid and then as it absorbs energy the phase would slowly change to the particles becoming more spread out and moving faster so it undergoes the substance then continues to absorb energy as it goes from a liquid to a gas where it goes through vaporization where it's either the entire liquid that boils or only the surface of the liquid that evaporates we then know that as that gas cools down it loses energy and condenses which is why the liquid water forms on the outside of a cold drink can. It is the water vapor in the air that is condensing onto that surface to form a liquid. We know if we continue to remove energy, it will then freeze to become a solid once again.